Hi my friends, it's your guru in learning, Professor Pushayati here again. And um, we're going to finish our story of the Romans in this session, yeah? But before I, I start, I want to give you a little bit of background. Remember, and I, I, I just we start uh, recalling some things, yeah? Um, Uh, remember that we talked about the fact that uh, around the turn of the cent first century BCE, i.e. around 100 BCE, right, there occurred peasant rebellions as a result of the, um, the issues that, um, you know, as basically as a result of the oppression. Um, that the peasants were feeling, right, and, um, under the Roman um, sort of uh, leadership, yeah. So, um, so there were uh, peasant, peasant rebellions, out of which, at the turn of the century, right, 100 BCE, emerged new men, right? Remember the new men who, who, um, you know, who attracted the attention of the men who were under their control, right? In, under their govern, govern, governorship, for instance, right? Um, so these um, new men, beginning from 107 BCE, right, turn of the century, um, started with um, Gaius Marius, as you remember, right? And then it continued with Sulla, Pompey, and then we got to Caesar, and then you remember the extent of the Roman Empire, the conquest that uh, Caesar had made in, um, in Great Britain and in North Africa and in, in Spain, right? And then we continued after Caesar, there was Mark Antony, but then the um, the um, nephew of Caesar, if I'm not mistaken, uh, right, okay, let let's see, uh, da, 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 um, okay, no, we'll get we'll get to it. I, I, I don't quote me on the on the um, on the familiar relationship yet, please, right? But familiar, they were related, right? Um, Octavian was related to Caesar, right? So Octavian um, comes to um, basically ascends to the Roman Empire, right? Uh, at the end, right? Now, during this period, right, during the period of Caesar and Mark Antony and and all these new men that were emerging, remember that the first triumvirate took place, right? And that the, 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 the empire was divided, as you recall, to three sections, right? Under the, each under the leadership of one person, the, the first triumvirate being um, Pompey, and and uh, and um, Caesar and um, and Mark Antony, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we'll go get to it, uh, right? We, I mean, you can you can go and um, review it, my friends, right? And if we don't get to it again, um, at any rate. So this was this was. Uh, so when, when Octavian came to power, right, when uh, Octavian came to power in, um, in 63 BCE, right, um, and ruled until 14 CE, yeah, um, he stabilized the internal political situation, right, and, um, address the needs of the empire by an by a <clears throat> ambitious sort of program of reform, right? As a result of um, all the reforms and all the uh, um, 
programs that he installed, right, um, in the Roman Empire and the unity that he brought, right, um, Octavian came to be known as Augustus. If you remember, right, and um, came to be um, ruled. Um, I mean, called as Augustus. Okay, he, he his rule finishes fourteen C.E. and then for two centuries, right, um, up until two hundred, say, right, C.E. Yeah, there was the Pax Romania. that we talked about, right? That that was created because the Romans had basically integrated, right, and, and brought together the resources of the Mediterranean Sea, of the regions to the north and south and east of the Mediterranean Sea. Remember that um, already with, um, with um, um, Caesar, um, right um, already with Caesar, we the uh, um, the empire moved into Eastern Mediterranean and conquered uh, um, conquered um, conquered Syria and and as we will see, got involved in that region. Uh, um, as I hope to show you, if we have time, with the. Uh, with the Israelites and the uh, Judaic population of of uh, of um, of of Syria Palestine, right? And it was in the um, in the midst of that struggle, right, between the Romans and the local inhabitants of Syria in which, as we will see, Parthians were involved, um, Parthian Empire was involved, um, that, uh, you know, it was that circumstance, circumstance the, the, um, the invasion or the conquest of Eastern Mediterranean by the Romans, right, um, that situation, it was that situation and their appointment of governors, right, to Syria, including, right, uh, Pontius Pilatus, right, um, in Judea, right, that was the circumstances out of which, um, in, in the context of which um, Christ is said to have been born and uh, started his uh, mission uh, missionary activities and um, and 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 then died right um, I mean um, put to death right by um, um, by the agents of the Roman Empire in in Judea Palestine right um, so 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 that so that the Romans had conquered basically all the territories around uh, the Mediterranean Sea, integrated their economy, and basically they were middlemen, as we remember, right? Because they did not have much to offer themselves, right? And it was the exchange of commodities, basically, out of which they, and, and of course their conquest, right, which brought them tremendous riches, right? But once they so so, after for two centuries after Augustus, right there was this Pax Romana, right, and um and um you know the regions that were conquered, right, um by the Romans even we are told prospered, right, as a result of this integration, right. Um, now I'm not a, an expert of um. Roman history, um, but you know, um, I I I normally challenge all the nineteenth century and twentieth uh, century histories that have come down to us, my friends. So I don't know whether or not this whole notion of Pax Romania um, 
uh, ha needs to be uh, reinvestigated or not. But anyway, this is the dominant narrative, right, that we get. Two centuries of peace and prosperity, right? But then comes the third century crisis, right? In the third century, cracks become um, visible, right? Um, so much so that the, the his, historians use the, the notion of uh, third century crisis, right, to refer to the period, as we talked about, between 235 to 284 CE, when political, military, and economic problems beset and nearly destroyed the Roman Empire, right? And, and you see, this is the extent of the limes, remember, my friends, that we had talked about? Okay, so there is this third century crisis, and the most visible sign of which is the, you know, ongoing change of rulers, constant change of rulers, so much so that, you know, 20, uh, more than 20 um, emperor claimed the office of the empire, right? Most reigned for only f a few months before they were overthrown. And then in the midst of the whole thing, right? Late third, beginning fourth century, uh, uh, we get the Germanic migrations, otherwise known as Germanic invasions, right? And what what is the story? This is a major story of um, of the history of the Roman Empire and the Germanization, if you will, of um, Western Europe, right? Um, so that, for instance, you know, countries above the, um, basically countries that were above the, um, you know, the, the chain of Alps Mountains, right? Um, and um, to, to, um, to the, to the um, north of France and, and in Germany, right? Um, that to the north of that, you have Germanic speaking populations, like Germans, like, um, you know, like, um, like the, um, uh, the Belgians, I forget my, where my f husband is from, my friends, right? Um, and and um, all the all the other countries in the north that are Germanic speakers, right? As opposed to the southern countries, right? Um, such as um, Gaul, Gaul, and 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 Spain, which um, which became Latinized, right? Um, Spain and Portugal and so on and so forth. Um, Right, so um, so th there was the Germanic migrations and Germanic um, invasions, which had a devastating impact on the empire's economy. Right, um, so. Um, as a result, you know, um, the, the emperors um, needed more taxation, right, uh, for the central government wanted more uh, taxation as a, out of the provinces. There was interruption of commerce as a result of fighting. fighting. The towns in Western Roman Empire, uh, their, their prosperity disappeared, right? Um, uh, short-sighted emperors um, reduced the amount, amount of precious metals in, in Roman coins so that there was inflation and the, um, uh, so, so that, uh, you know, the coinage became less and less acceptable in the marketplace and as a result, parts of the empire reverted to a barter economy, i.e. I give you some uh, produce, you return 
um, you return the value of that by some other pro product, right? And of course, it is far less um, efficient, right? And in this system, and uh, and further cutting to long distance commerce, right? The municipal aristocracy, right, declined, right? Um, they were s slowly crushed out of existence, right? Um, and so on and so forth. Um, so population shifts occurred. Well, we went too far back. Um, yeah, so um, population sh uh, shift occurred and what happened as a result? Um, people again, um, right, um, resorted um, and you came, I mean, people came out of the cities and went into the countryside in search of work, right? In other words, in other words, urban populations became again farmers, right? Um, and they sought employment and prote protection from, you know, potential raiders and other go government officials, right? So here you have a situation. Remember that the peasants had already lost their land to begin with, right? A while ago, yeah? Already. And and when they were on, on all the wars that were taking place, right? Uh, civil wars and whatnot, and and these big latifundas were were appearing, right? Agricultural estates, right? Now into these estates come people who have become even more dependent. They don't have a job. They become dependent, right? They need a, They need a job, and they need the protection. So they go, right, to these major latifundas in search of work, right? And um, this, together with the Germanic invasions, right, it's what provides for you the context of, um, of the Middle Ages, right? The medieval times of Europe. That, that is, that is, that, you know, was known as an age of darkness, right, for good reason, and we will get to it, yeah? Um, but uh, but the, the, the result was really the basis of, excuse me, European medieval uh, uh, feudalism, right, and, and, and serfdom, right, and the chevaliers and petty kingdoms and whatnot was, you know, all of that came out of these two phenomena, right? Um, the decline of the Roman Empire and the migration or invasions of Anglo-Saxons, right? And, 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 and you see the way the migrations, uh, in, in, uh, invasions occurred, right, uh, from 100 um, CE, right, to 500 CE. Of course, you know, most of it, as I told you, happens in the 4th century, right? Um, for instance, here, um, the Huns are coming, right, and they engage in, in a war in... Um, in uh, in 451, right? Um, the the Vandals come and and they look look at this. They come and and invade from from northern Alps, right? They come they come through Spain, right? And they go to North Africa and they go to Carthage, and it is from Carthage that they um you know. Um, invade not only Rome, right, attack Rome, but Sicily, Corsica, you know, all the islands that are around Rome. And then the Ostrogoths come as close as Constantinople, right? 
and um, the gods uh, come to the east and um, uh, well the Visigoths right um, immigrate and migrate so anyway in the four four hundreds right three hundred four hundreds right Western Roman Empire right is is you know is is besieged basically right by by it by by the, by its decline right and by the invasion of uh, of uh, of the germanic tribes right there comes who diocletian right the savior yeah and when at the end of the third century, at the beginning of the fourth, right, when the you know the things look the, uh, their bleakest, right, a commoner by uh, by birth, Diocletian, right, uh, has had risen to the through the ranks of the army and and became the emperor in two eighty four, right. Um, he ruled for more than 20 years and died in bed, unlike, you know, most other emperors, right? Um, so, um, okay, um, right, and what did he decide to do, right? He basically changed, excuse me, he basically changed the structure of the empire, right? He put, he kind of sort of, you know, divided the empire, right, by, um, by making Constantinople, right, its eastern capital, right, where he himself uh, assumed one, um, became the emperor, right, and um, and then he had a Caesar who was located in um, in um, in Thessalo Thessalonica Thessalonica Th Thessalonica um, yes and then uh, his partner right um, Constantinus the um, the one. Well, his partner was Maximian, yeah, the Caesar, right, um, Maximilian, right, and and his Caesar was Constantius, who was um, sort of um, under the um, uh, was was sort of um, stationed as at Trier, right, um, below the um, below the Rhine. Right, so um, radical reforms, right, and uh, that saved in some sense the Roman state. Yeah, in order to halt the inflation, um, where uh, you know the money had become less and less valuable. Right, uh, he issued an edict, edict that uh, specified the maximum prices that could be charged for various com um, commodities, right? Um, therefore, lessening the eff effect of inflation in effect, right? Uh, and then um, to ensure an adequate supply of workers, what he did was he froze people into their professions and required them to train their sons to succeed them, right? So he, he basically, destroyed basically any kind of mobility yeah and these 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 um these reforms originally were were um were you know served their purposes right but they had unintended consequences right uh, for instance a black market uh, arose among buyers and sellers who chose the, to ignore the government's price controls, right, and establish their own prices for goods and services, kind of like what you what we saw with the masks, my friends, right, when they were when we were first afflicted by this um, tremendous uh, 
disease, right, that that is destroying us and is not being controlled by our auspicious government at, at the moment, right? Um, remember when when uh, when COVID first came? Remember the prices of masks and disinfectants and uh, what not rose fivefold. I don't know. Yeah. So this was the kind of thing that was happening also in the Roman Empire, right? Um, so therefore, many of the Roman um, citizenry, right, began began to see the government as an oppressive entity, right, that that no longer deserved their loyalty, right, and once Diocletian was forced to resign in three or five, the old divisiveness, right, reemerged, um, and various claimants uh, came to battle for the throne. The eventual winner was, of course, Constantine the Great, right? Who ruled also for a long time, for three decades, right? At the beginning of the fourth century, um, reunited the entire empire under his rule by 324, right? Uh, and, and even won over uh, a key battle right uh, in um in near the tiber river near rome these are the mosaics that they were made uh, that were made of him in the mosque uh, i mean uh, it became a mosque in the church right that he created in um Hagia sophia the mosaic was added to it circa thousand, right? 700 years after his demise. So much was he, uh, was he revered as a Christian emperor, right? It is from then on, my, my friends, right? It is, it, is for, it is because of the fact that Christianity grew as the Roman Empire grew, and that has a reason of its own, right? It is because of that, that fact, right, that the so-called Western civilization, right, is, uh, has become Christian, right? Um, because of the conversion process, right? Uh, in the Roman Empire, right? With that, which which takes us to the um, to the mission mission of Jesus and Paul and um, and uh, his apostles and 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 whatnot, right? So um, in uh, in um, three twenty four, if I'm not mistaken. Constantine claimed that he had seen a cross, hmm. the sign of Christian God, superimposed on the sun. I want you to keep in mind that we are talking about the sun, right? Sunday, right? Moon day, Monday, yeah? Okay, we are talking about the sun here, right? So. Constantine came and claimed uh, that he uh, he saw um, you know uh, he saw the cross right and that he will uh, from now on um, convert to Christianity and he will uh, promote the uh, religion of um, of um, of um, Christ and of course he undertook um, other uh, other um, sort of architectural uh, um, undertakings, right? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, my friends. But one of his major accomplishments 
was actually this Hagia Sophia. Hagia Sophia that of course is now in Istanbul, right? And um, and where the whole region Anatolia became Muslim after the Turkish conquest in um, in in um, in the eleventh century, in early eleventh century, um, which is a which is itself a very interesting story, but we will not get to that period. So anyway, so Constantine uh, started, um, I mean, you know, built this mosque, he became a devout Christian, right? Um, and that became, um, you know, tremendous historical um, significance, right? Um, you know, he who was a Christian, right, were, were, was given preference over the majority pagan, right, um, population under the, um, under the um, Roman control, right? And in order to seek political office or favors from the government, they saw that it is opportune, right, um, to convert to Christianity. Even so, even so, my friends, up until seven, eight centuries and whatnot, right, we have pagans still, still um, living in um, these parts of Western Europe, yeah, in the, in the northern parts of Western Europe, basically. Okay, so we have the phenomena of conversion, and of course Constantine, right, makes um, Constantinople, right, the city of Constantine, his capital, right, and remember the city of um, Constantinople or Istanbul at the moment, right, and just go to an. Uh, here, so I can show you map. Um, I guess I will get the Google map, I hope. Yeah. Okay, and then you go Istanbul. Okay, so you see that, um, okay. This actually um, right okay this area is Istanbul right remember Black Sea Bosphorus right Sea of Marmara and what what I can't hear you I cannot hear you okay Dardanelles right going to the Asian right Istanbul or Constantinople was on the two sides of the Bosphorus, right, um, sea, right, Bosphorus sort of channel, right, uh, one part of it on Asia, one part of it in, in so-called Europe, right, um, that is why Turkey is so insistent in the modern period to become part of um, the EU, right? Right? Yes, right. Okay. Um, because, you know, part of it is European. <laughs> and lo and behold, Turkey, European. Anyway, this is Barf. Bosphorus. That's why I wanted you to know where it, it. I mean, this is Constantinople during the rule of Ottoman Turks, right? Um, Ottoman Empire. If you don't know what Ottoman Empire is, you have to learn about it, and that's why you have to take the second um, section of uh, of this course. Of course, it depends with whom you take it. Depend, uh, you know, and and yeah, what. And, and the perspective that you get. 
but um, Ottoman Empire uh, was one of the major empires of pre-modern world, right? That uh, that was in existence from fourteen fifty three to um, nineteen twenty, right? until it was destroyed by the European powers, okay? But anyway, um, this is a picture of that period. This depicts that period, right? As you can see from the headgear of, of the inhabitants, right? And you can see the ships, right? And so on and so forth, right? Okay. Now, um, so... Um, So, um, Constantine moved his capital to um, Constantinople, um, you know, built a major church, Hagia Sophia, um, started patronizing Christianity and Christian populations, right? And, um, and um, you know, declared Constantinople as the um, city of God and... Uh, and the city of, um, you know, uh, the seat of the Roman Empire, right? Now, what was the case? What was going on in the, in what became the Eastern Roman Empire, right? Or Byzantium, yeah? Is that there was no Germanic invasion there, right? There were none. The Germanic invasions didn't get to, um, to I mean, they got to parts of Asia to like, Caucasus and whatnot, um, but um, but uh, they really didn't get in into Asia as such, right? So um, so um, and and Romanization, right, came very very late, right? And in any case, when we talk about Romanization, uh, one of the things that we basically are talking about, one of the issues that we are talking about is their political structure, right? Um, with the Germanic invasions, remember, the urban centers of the West were, were literally destroyed, right? Um, population migration out of them, right? Well, if a poverty stricken, right? Uh, well, in these conditions, right, um, one of the first things that suffers as it is suffering now, of course, not in my class, yeah, not with you guys. Um, when when things are in this disarray, right? Uh, you know, the, the, there is no time. I mean, not in my class again, right? Um, you know, if you uh, if you're forced to leave your um, livelihoods. Yeah, and and go in search of if we were forced to do that, right, in the twenty first century, and uh, you know, um, have our cities destroyed, and and we are forced to, you know, start from day one. You know, making a living and everything. Education would be the last thing on my, on our mind. So education suffered, right, in the West. Uh, urban centers suffered in the West. Um, Roman, it was the West that basically had gone through all this Romanization, right? And parts of North Africa, right? Um, the East had remained Greek, had remained prosperous, right? Had remained educated, uh, and, and the educated elite spoke Greek, right? Um, and they had withstood, better withstood the third century crisis, right? Um, more Christians were living in the eastern pro um, provinces. I don't know what does that have to do with anything, but okay. Um, the, your book says that, right? So there appeared a deep gulf, right? Um, between the Greek-speaking lands 
and the lands in the west that came under the influence of Germanic rulers. So that around 330, right, um, this is the situation that you have remaining of the Roman um, Empire. There is a division of the empire to the eastern parts and the western parts. The western parts, as I mentioned to you, um, eventually come under Germanic invasions and uh, who eventually resuscitate this uh, notion of Holy Roman Empire, right? Remember Holy Roman Empire? Yeah. Um, and, and the Eastern uh, Rome, right? Eastern Roman Empire with its capital in Constantinople, more educated, more urban, more Christian, right? Um, this was the situation um, in the um, beginning of the fourth century. What became what became Roman what what became Eastern Roman Empire, my friends, um, changed its name to Byzantium ultimately. But to the inhabitants of the Eastern Roman Empire, they were still Romans, although speaking Greek. Yeah? Okay. So, um, and this empire ultimately becomes um, Byzantium, and then uh, if this is Byzantium, my friends, excuse me, if this is Byzantium, right, um, circa 300, and I remember I told you that Byzantium um, has a history, it's a long history. It goes out of the picture in 1453, right? By the Turkish Ottomans, who basically um, you know, reestablish the Eastern Roman Empire, right, and more because they have most of North Africa um, as well, and they have Egypt, yeah. Um, and then they have to deal with another Iranian empire. Their major, major um, enemy, right, um, from 300 to 650, right, were the Iranian Sasanians who had taken over from the Parthians and their empires um, circa, yeah, around, basically around, well, this is actually 220. Let's get our dates a little bit right. Oops. 220s, 224 to be exact, uh, to 650. <coughs> Parthians, right, to, to, uh, to um, I'm sorry, this is, yeah, Um, 220 to 220 BCE CE <coughs> excuse me um, basically um, 500 years I'm giving you um, the dates are wrong but we will correct it my friends forget about this okay um, 
we will talk about Parthians and all the other Iranians, Iranian empires, right, my friends? So, um, I think I'm going to stop here. Yes, I'm going to uh, stop here. Excuse me. And we will leave the Parthians and the Chinese, my friends, for the next module. Um, well, um, and we will pick up the Iranian side of things and see why 500 years of history has been deleted, right? I was hearing the, um, one of the news anchors saying um, today that we never teach the real history of the United States to our children from kindergarten. We have to teach the history of the United States the way it really was, or as close to what it really was as we can reconstruct it right my friends so uh, in our reconstruction of the so-called western uh, you know the roots of western civilization the so-called western civilization yes um, we will now deal next module we will deal with the role of the Iranians and the Chinese in our narrative of the world. Um, wherever you are, I wish you a splendid time. Bye, my friends.